So we are going to learn the simplex method with two variables. Now this is a maximization problem. Maximum z is equal to 4x1 plus 7x2. Subject to two constraints 4x1 plus 3x2 less than or equal to 12. 3x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 12. x1, x2 greater than or equal to 0. And this I am going to bring it to a suitable form introducing the slack variables s1 and s2. So this becomes maximum z is equal to 4x1 plus 7x2 plus 0s1 plus 0s2. That is, now this constraint left hand side is less than or equal to 12. So if I add a slack variable, it will become equal to 12. The same in the case of the second uh, equation also. So I am adding a slack variable s1 here to make it equal to 12 and a slack variable s2 to make this equation equal to 12. And to introduce this s1 and s2 in the objective function, I am writing it as 0s1 plus 0s2. Now from this, I am going to prepare this table. Now the table has these columns, q which is the constant seen in the two constraints. cv is for the current variable. c is the coefficient of the current variable. x1 and x2 will have the coefficients of x1 and x2 in the two constraints we have. S1 and S2 again, the coefficients of S1 and S2 in the two constraints we have. The ratio I will tell you later. And Cj is the coefficient of all these values, X1, X2, S1 and S2. Now the current variable, the two variables which we have introduced in the constraints now. So that will be S1 and S2. The coefficients of S1 and S2 we see in the objective function. So this will become 0, 0. Okay. And Cj is the coefficient of all the variables in the objective function. So 4, 7, 0, 0 will take its place here. Then I will write the coefficients of X1, X2, S1, S2 in the two constraints. So the first constraint, constraint has 4, 3 as the coefficients of x1 and s2. s1 is available here, so it is 1. And s2 is not there, so the coefficient is 0. s1 coefficient is 1 and s2 coefficient is 0. And the constraint, the constant here will be written in this place. The same way I write for the second constraint, or now it is an equation. So 3, 4. And S1 is not here, which means S1 has a coefficient 0, so I write a 0 here. And S2 has a coefficient 1, so I write 1 here. And the constant 12 in this place. Now, I am going to write Zj and then Zj minus Cj. Now, how do you get the Zj values? Zj values is nothing but you multiply these two. Okay? Okay. And you multiply these two and add it. So it is 0 into 4 plus 0 into 3 which is nothing but 0. The same way you write for the next one also. That is you write the product of these two, product of these two and then add. So it is going to be 0. And obviously you can see that since the coefficient is 0, all the other values also will be 0 only. So the first table is very easy for you. So you just simply write blindly, you can write a 0 there. Now Zj minus Cj is this minus this. Okay, you have your Zj values here, you have your Cj values here. So 0 minus 4 which is minus 4, 0 minus 7 which is minus 7, 0 and 0. Now for a maximization problem, you should not have Zj minus Cj negative. All the values of Zj minus Cj should be positive only. But here we see, we see two negative values. So in the negative values, the most negative, the most negative will be the entering variable. And I will put two brackets here. The most negative will be the entering variable. So this is our entering variable variable. This is our entering variable. x2 is our entering variable. Now which variable goes out? 
So to decide that, I am going to write the ratio which is q divided by entering variable. The entering variable here is x2. So it is 12 divided by 3 which is equal to 4. And again the next one is 12 divided by 4 which is equal to 3. Now among these two values, the variable which goes out is the least positive integer. Note, note down this positive integer. So the variable which goes out is S2. So we are going to prepare the next table now. Okay. So S1 there is no change. So S1 is going to be here only. Now instead of S2, the variable X2 comes in. I repeat, the S2 variable goes out and the variable X2 comes in. So, this is your outgoing variable. Okay. Now, write the coefficients. Now, the S1 coefficient is 0 and the X2 coefficient is 7. So, I write this here. I write it here. Now, what happens for the S1 row and X2 row? Now, we have to decide on the key element or the pivot element. So, the entering variable and the outgoing variable. The value which coincides, which is there in the junction, is our star variable. In the next table, the star variable or the key element will become 1. The key element will become 1. To make it 1, what should I do? It is 4. So, if I divide it by 4, it will become 1. So, all the values have to be divided by 1. All the values in the row should be divided by 4. I'm sorry, should be divided by 4. So, 12 divided by 4, which is 3 here. 3 divided by 4, 3 by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, 0 divided by 4 is 0 and 1 divided by 4 is 1 by 4. And what happens to the other values in the first row? So in the first row, I am going to use the formula old element minus key row element into key column element by key element. This is the old element minus this. But don't have to by heart this formula. Without that we are going to do now. Okay. Simply take the four values. Now I am going to change this four. This is my old element. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So what I am going to write here is 4 minus. Just cross multiply these two values and you will get 9 divided by 4. I am writing the 4 here. That is my old element. That is I am going to replace this 4. So I will write that 4 minus these two elements I will cross multiply divided by 4. So you get 4 minus 16 by 4 which is 4 minus 9 by 4 which is 16 minus 9 by 4. So 7 by 4. Now coming to this value 3, 4. What you should do is this 3, 4 and 3, 4. You write it again. Okay. And this becomes 3 minus cross multiply these two. So 12 by 4. So 3 minus 3 it becomes 0 here. Now come to this 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is going to be 1 minus 0 by 4 which is nothing but 1. Come to this value 1, 2, 3, 4 it is going to be 0 minus 1 into 3 is 3, 3 divided by 4. So with a minus sign 0 minus 3 into 1 by 4. Now come to this 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is going to be 12 minus 12 into 3. I am cross multiplying by 4 which is 9 and you get an answer 3 here. Now that 
I got all the values. I am going to find out the ZJ. Now ZJ is nothing but you multiply these two, you multiply these two and add. But this being a zero, everything when I multiply will become zero. So I don't have to bother about this. I have to just write the product of these values. So 7 into 3 by 4 is 21 by 4. 7 into 1 is 7. 7 into 0 is 0. 7 into 1 by 4 is 7 by 2. Now I have to find out the ZJ minus CJ values which is 21 by 4 minus 4. 7 minus 7 0. 0 minus 0. 7 by 4 minus. I am not even finding out this value. I am not simplifying because I know it is positive. So ZJ minus CJ values are positive. Are positive. So what is, what is my answer? The solution is here. The solution is here. So X1 is not in this place so it is 0. X2 is there which is 3. S1 is equal to 3. S2 is not seen there so it is 0. So maximum Z is equal to 4X1 plus 7X2 plus 0S1 plus 0S2 which is equal to 4 into 0 plus 7 into 3 plus 0 which is 21.